Have you noticed that when you post on social media about your business, you get a lot less response than when you post cat videos <laughs> or selfies or other interesting, you know, your thoughts, um, what's going on in your life, etc. Or you may have also noticed that you're really excited about your business or something that you're offering, a particular service. Maybe it's a, a new idea that you have that um, that you know you're you think is really going to help others, and you email your friends about it, and you're surprised how few people respond back to you. At least respond enthusiastically, saying, "Oh my gosh, let me sign up or let me refer you to so and so and so and so." So here's the reality of it, and I I, I really hope that this video will shift your mind about what it really takes to reach authentic business success. And I'm sharing this from 15 years of being full-time in my own business, as well as having coached thousands of clients by this point, people who I work with one-to-one -one or in my group programs um, and in various, you know, courses that I've taught. So the reality is that because you came up with some idea of a service or a package or a program, you went through the journey of developing all this. I mean, not only maybe the weeks or the months of developing this offer, but your entire life has been a journey up to this point of making this offer you've created such a mind-blowing thing for you. In your mind, in your heart, it's, it's, it's so valuable. It's so great. It's so needed for everybody. But here's the thing. The rest of the world hasn't lived your life. The rest of the world hasn't even had the benefit of seeing you develop it in the past few weeks or months. Okay. This is where it's so important to be in touch with your audience along the whole journey. And the second point, main, main point I want to make here is it takes way more experimentation than you might imagine than most people are willing to do. Are you willing to do it? I hope so. I encourage you to step into that willingness to experiment. Because it's not um, the classic idea, maybe of of uh, the the business hero who like has this amazing idea, and then usually a he puts it out there, and then you know the market responds with great joy, and you know, no, it's the unsung stories of the you know millions of entrepreneurs who try thing after thing after thing after thing after thing after thing after thing. And after 57 tries, they finally have a product, a service, a package, a program that somebody buys. It might even be literally you know, a dozen or two dozen things they tried before one person bought. You don't hear those stories. What you see, especially on social media, is the, well, hey, everyone, I'm so excited. You know, it's first of all, you you see two things on social media. You see the person announcing their thing and sounding excited, and then you don't hear about whether they got they got anybody buying at all. That part you don't hear, okay? And oftentimes nobody bought. You don't hear that. And the second type of thing you see on social media is, I am proud to share this testimonial from this client. That that that. And you, so it seems so easy when you're just watching, you know, people people's journeys on social media or their email newsletter or what you hear from friends. I mean, hopefully, hopefully if you have entrepreneurial friends, people who are also trying to build their true livelihood, maybe you'll hear about the many, many tries that didn't work. But most of the time, what we see on, what we see perceive on social media and even stories are announcements of launches and then again, it's we assume, hey, they're excited about the launch. It looks pretty good. They probably did okay. When the reality is that most of the time, nobody, most of the time, they didn't get any signups or like they got like two signups. 
when they were expecting 20 or 50, okay? Story number one, story number two, again, is you, you see the testimonials and they say like, oh, how come it's, it seems easy when the reality is it's not easy for most of us. It's not, uh, oh, let me put it this way. It's not quick for most of us. Whether it's easy or not depends on your expectations. And this is why, again, I bring it back to the original question that prompted this video is the question is this, how come I'm posting about the thing I'm so passionate about and nobody is responding back or so few people are responding back? Well, my question is your question, what is the assumption behind that? The assumption is, well, I'm excited about this. So therefore other people must be excited about this, right? Wow. You got excited about this because of your entire life's journey up to this point. You lived a particular life that had particular challenges and, you know, breaks in luck and, you know, like books you read, people you talked to, situations that gave you like insights. Like you lived that exact path that led you to thinking that this offer is brilliant or amazing and other, but other people haven't lived the same life. This is really important to understand, which is why when it comes to selling something or even posting content and getting people to like respond, you have to understand enough about the commonalities of the journey that you share with your, with your audience. Like everyone's lived a unique life, right? But even in that you, even in the thousand unique lives we've lived, I don't know how many people are watching this. Let's say, uh, uh, maybe uh, let's say a hundred people watch this video. Okay. Let's, let's just talk about you and me here, right? Me living one life and you, let's say the hundred of you who watch this have lived a hundred different lives. All right. The reality is even in our unique lives, there are common pain, pain, painful experiences we've experienced. There are common um, insights that we've had. There are common uh, experiences of of success or wins or like, you know, things that brought us gratitude. There are common issues that we're thinking about. Okay. If I can see the commonality amongst the hundred of us here and speak to that commonality, then of course the hundred of you are like, oh, I resonate with that. But if I'm only speaking to my unique life experience without regard to what is common to you, you're gonna not you're gonna not resonate with this. Do you see what I mean? Well, that's what you're doing when it comes to offering your service or your package or your program. Are you really speaking to the common experience among the people you're offering this to, or were you just in your own closet in your own home office um, cooking the stuff up in your head? How many people did you talk to about these things before you? put it out there. This is why I am such a fan of the process that I'm calling authentic market discovery. Now, I'm not here to sell you that course. I, I teach a course on this stuff. You can go and look it up if you want to. But I just want to talk about the process. The process is where you get back in touch with the heart and the energy field of your audience. And when I say your audience, everybody has an audience. It doesn't matter if you just got started yesterday on social media. You have an audience. Who's my audience, George? I just literally created my first social media account. Your audience, do, do you have any anybody in this world that you can email? I'm being facetious as I say that. Obviously, everybody does. You have people you can email. You have friends. You have family members. You have colleagues, perhaps. You have at least a few people who, if you sent them a message, would know who you are. That's your beginning audience. Of course, who else is your audience right now? Unless you like know how to run Facebook ads or Instagram ads and build an audience that way, fine. But in the beginning, your audience are the people who you can actually reach who will respond back to you. Because if they respond back to you, they're more likely to then talk about your business with the people that respond back to them. You see what I mean? So, we all start with an audience. And the question is, 
have we gotten back in touch with our audience recently to find out of the various things we can offer, what actually resonates with, of the various ways we can deliver our skills and express our passions, which of these ways are in common resonance with them as well? Not, not everything you're passionate about, your audience cares about. You've noticed that probably. But of the five things that you're, that interest you, probably one of those things is in common resonance with your existing audience, the people who can respond back to you. Even if it's you have five people in the whole world who you could email and have people respond back and have them respond back. It's in common resonance with them or with somebody they know, right? Because even if you have only five people you can message in the whole world, those five people probably on average have 50 to 150 people that they could message and, and email back. Of course, you probably have 50 or to 150 yourself. But I'm just talking about the person who says, I've been in a cave for 10 years <laughs> in silent meditation with nobody visiting me. But I still have five people in my life who could who know who I am and would write back to me. Those five are connected to 50 to 150. Some of the one of those five might be, you know, quite a networker and have hundreds of people that they could they could talk about your thing if only you presented something that was in resonance with them they they might say you know what even though of the five choices you gave me one of those one of these uh, the four of them have no i don't get it or it doesn't matter to me but one of those things i can think of at least several people that resonate with that okay so again Back to the original question. George, I'm posting about my business. I'm reaching out uh, to ask people to have conversations with me or whatever. And so few people respond back. And my question back to you is the, the invitation, the message that you posted, was it, a, was it like you're playing the lottery where you're like, all right, I'm going to play the lottery and I better win the lottery. That's madness. I, I hope you don't gamble, but because lottery playing the lottery is gambling. But if you, it, it, but but that's a somewhat apropos metaphor here because if you were playing the lottery, you're, you're not going to be like, okay, I'm going to buy one ticket and I'm going to win the lottery. No, you have to buy, truthfully, thirteen million tickets or something like that to win the lottery, right? But thankfully, business is a lot easier than that. You don't have to buy, you don't have to make 13 million offers before having one person or having having the rest of your life be secured. You probably need to put out 130 offers though. Maybe not 13 million, but probably over the lifetime of your business, it's something like 100, 130 to maybe even you know 300 offers. At this point, I've been in business for 15 years, okay? And every year I've made somewhere between eight to 13 offers. Let me say that again. How about you? Are you like putting one thing out there and go, how come nobody's responding? I'm so passionate about this thing. Again, because you've been in your head and in your closet, so-called, and you haven't been in touch with your audience and really notice the common resonance that you have with them and that they have with each other. So I have, let's just, I'm just going to average it out. I have made 10 offers per year for 15 years. So I've had 150 offers made to my audience in, in, these, in this time. And out of those 150, I would say somewhere around three to five of them. Yeah, three to five of my 150 offers have basically, I feel like set me up for the next 10 years. Like I am grateful that today, I'm in a business space. I'm in a, the, the level of my business is such that I'm, I could pretty much say I'm set for life in terms of the audience I've built. And I know what offers I make that they are likely to buy. But that's after, again, I mean, along the way, I've, you know, I've made 150 offers and I've discovered somewhere around, I'm, I'm going to for sure three of them, but maybe up to five to maybe up to seven. But again, it's, certainly less than 
of my offers. And the same thing, the same thing happens when I reach out my messaging, when I reach out in my messaging, posting on social media or emailing to have conversations with my audience, to have people say, yes, I'd, I'd love to have a conversation. The way that you framed this message interests me enough, has enough common resonance with me that I'm going to respond and say, I'd like to have a message. I'd like to have a, a call with you. Again, it's somewhere around 10% or less. So let me ask you again, when you're telling me, George, I posted on social media and then nobody responded. Was that one post or was that 10 posts? Did you try 10 different ways? Now, I'm, I'm not saying you should post all 10 variations the same day, obviously. That would be a little strange. But you could post one variation a day and then wait like three to five days and post another variation. So if you, let's say if you were impatient and you posted a different variation every three days, then within a single month, you've tested 10 variations of your outreach message. And I promise you, one of those 10 variations is going to work better than the other nine. It might even work really, really well. Most of you watching this haven't tested 10 variations of your outreach message. You've tested one. And by the way, you know, and, and by the way, when I'm saying outreach message, I, I'm thinking in my head about my, my students in my authentic market discovery course where they are, they are reaching out for invitations to have conversations with their audience to understand the common the, the conversations are market discovery conversations. Most of you watching this are not in my course. And so you're thinking about selling something. You're thinking about, oh, I have this coaching package or I, I have this healing modality I want to sell. And my question to you is, have you tested 10 variations of, well, let, let's back up a little bit here. Have you tested 10 different coaching packages or did you just test one? Have you tested 10 different ways to frame your healing modality. Let's say you, uh, I'm, I'm not a healing expert, but let's say you do Reiki and you're like, George, I posted about my Reiki and nobody signed up. That was one variation. I mean, did you, did you, did you try talking about Reiki in 10 different ways? Like, you know, again, out of 30 days, right? You do one every three days. That's, that's quite fast. That's quite impatient, but usually you do maybe one test per week, let's say, and that's 10 weeks, that's two and a half months. But out of those two and a half months of testing, you're going to come up with one of those 10 ways of talking about Reiki, or for a particular situation for Reiki, or for a particular type of person, these are all different variations, and testing 10 different things. Before you tell me, George, I posted 10 different ways. And, 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 and when I say to your audience, I mean, did your audience actually see it? Well, the question is, if you post on social media and you and you notice every time you post on social media, you get no response, right? Well, let's just back up here. You've already done something to the algorithm where your people aren't even seeing it. Now you have to post something interesting again for them to start the algorithm again so that they'll see your next post. In there. But to ensure people see it, you should probably email them again now. You can't email everybody in your social media audience, let's say, but you probably have five or 10 friends, colleagues, acquaintances, supporters that you could email. Start there. You know, now don't, don't email all 10 variations to the same 10 people. They're going to, they're going to tire of it, but you could break up your contact list. I promise you, if you start looking at your contacts list, people who are in your email address book, people who are connected to you on LinkedIn, people who are Facebook friends, like real friends, okay? If you look at even those three places, your email address book, your LinkedIn connections, and your Facebook real friends, you have probably 100 people you could email. And you could break that 100 people down into buckets of 10 and try one variation per 10. You see what I mean? So I'm just giving you ideas and just giving setting your standard a little higher for what a real entrepreneur does and not like this person who's told me, well, not, not just this person, by the way, this person represents many people who have this issue, myself included at an earlier stage of my business. Hey, I posted about my thing and, and it's so passionate for me and nobody responded. Again, watch this video again. I talked about the unique journey versus common resonance. 
and therefore the experimentation that's required to discover the common resonance. So I'll end the video by saying this. All along the way of doing these experimentations and coming to realize the willingness to do these experimentations, I hope that you do it all from a place of service, from a place of dedication to your higher calling, which is to serve humanity from your heart. And to really serve humanity means you need to get to know humanity better. Again, back to the common resonance. And it's like, George, I wish I could just have this thing that's so passionate for me and my post it and people just love it. You'll get there eventually when you have enough of a true audience like I do, okay? But before you get there, you have to do your service. You have to be willing to serve them from the heart, which means you need to connect to their heart. You need to be in conversation with them to understand their heart and their mind so that you can make invitations that are of your common, the common resonance with them. Do it as an act of service and dedication to the higher values, such as of compassion, empathy, of um, brotherhood, sisterhood, of um, joy in connecting heart to heart. That's what makes it meaningful for me to do so-called marketing or authentic marketing. I hope this is helpful for you. I look forward to seeing if, if this is helpful for you. And if you have any questions, feel free to comment below and I'll, I'll try to respond briefly. Thank you so much for watching and uh, I wish you a wonderful day.